Ah, enjoying this World Cup break. Oop, Germany on the break. Oh, another goal. Wow, 13 0. Geez, big Carl might be getting unfit with this effort. Oop, who's that ringing? Come on, Ian. I'm World Cup scouting, mate. It's, it's 13 0. Yeah, okay, I can answer this, can I? Hey, Ian. Better be quick because I'm watching the World Cup again. Hi, boss. I found a gem of a goalkeeper. Scout report is in your inbox. Uh, yep, sure. I'll take a look at it. I don't know if we actually need a goalkeeper, but yep, I'll have a look at it. And also, thanks for not mentioning the Champions League final. You're a good lad. Okay, I'll see you when I get back to Iceland. Okay. Right, let's open the computer and just see who this is. No, too soon. Ian, that's way too soon. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 156 of Who Civic Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode we do have a few things to cover off off the back of what happened in yesterday's episode. As you can see on screen we've got some European rankings off the back of that. A little bit of a transfer update, some of the bits that we have done as I said off the back of the end of yesterday's episode. And we've also got a game in the Icelandic Cup against Phil Kerr, which could actually be a little bit tricky because we do still have a few players on World Cup duty as well as Basaro Gay. He's still at the club, but he is injured for a little while. So that could actually be an interesting little game there in the Icelandic Cup fourth round. So if you are looking forward to today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is. Greatly appreciated, but here are the European rankings off the back of the Champions League final in yesterday's episode. Cheeky scout report there, not too long off the back of where we did end things in yesterday's episode. Definitely not going to re-sign Joe Corcoran after what happened yesterday, even though he did play quite well. But man, did we bottle that penalty shootout if you missed that Champions League final. I'll leave a link to it in the top right corner, but here are the ranking updates off the back of this European season, which has just finished. There you can see in terms of the league rankings, we have moved up just one place there from 15th to 14th for the Islands deal. And also in terms of the club rankings, we stay in seventh despite making our second Champions League final in a row. So that means we are still right up there, sandwiched in between PSG and Juventus and behind quite a few English teams and Real Madrid, hopefully, at the end of this upcoming season, just looking there at the coefficient for 35 and 36, maybe we can sneak up those rankings a little bit more and maybe get our way into pot one sooner rather than later for Champions League draws. But those are what the rankings do look like off the back of this past European season. And we'll just go forward a little bit now and update you guys on some transfer business that we have done off the back of that Champions League final loss. And it's probably easier if we do run through this off the transfer history page. As you can see, so far no ins off the back of Carl Vollen during the knockout stages of the Champions League. But six outs on the right-hand side does mean we've raised a little bit more money to invest into our squad, which we are hopefully going to do sooner rather than later. But so far, we have let go of six players. Two of those players right up the top there. We we're going to leave us on a free transfer come the end of this Icelandic season, that's both Declan Spencer and Stamatas Chartzakis. We have just sold them before the start of the next one, just so we do get a little bit of money off those guys and get them out of our squad so that we can hopefully use that near £1 million to invest back into our squad. But Declan Spencer, pretty average goalkeeper, two-star current ability and potential when he was at the club. We signed him on a free transfer a season or two ago. He has gone to Rangers for £750,000 and Stamatas Chartzakis who was at the club for quite a while but never really developed as much as we were hoping. In the backup team, he has gone to Ali in his home nation of Greece and that is for £135,000. So that's a transfer we actually make quite a bit of a loss on but we do have quite a few young promising wingbacks coming through at the club these days but some more notable departures there down near the bottom. The first of those is Lee Van Tam. He was one of our starting wingbacks, the one who we could get the most interest in out of him and Kenny Boreal, and he has gone to Leicester City for £10 million. That does free up a spot so that we can start it right back next season. Redenko Krollo, once he comes back from his loan 
at Lille. In fact, he has just come back from that today, but is still a little bit tired, so he won't be playing in this upcoming Icelandic Cup game. But he is back at the club and is going to replace Levan Tarr as our starting right back for this upcoming European season. But we do make a little bit of a profit on that transfer of the Vietnamese come Czech Republic right back. Did a pretty good job for us over a few seasons here at the club, paying $5.5 million for him back in 2031. We nearly double the value there in selling him off to Leicester City. And as I said, we can try and bring through a new generation of hopefully players who won't bottle Champions League finals quite so much. So Lee Van Tam leaves us, as I said, after a few good seasons here at Volsinger. In the first team, the next player that we did sell was Gaetano De Prisco. We have a few young centre backs here at the club now who should be able to replace someone like Gaetano. We have sold him for £9.5 million to Mines, potentially. Could have got a little bit more for some of these players that we have already sold, but we did need a little bit of money, I felt like, to just bring in a few more youngsters to bolster the stocks here at Volsunger in some positions. So Gaetano De Prisco leaves us for £9.5 million going to the Bundesliga. Two minds, he's been here a little bit longer. We signed him back in 2028, only for £2 million. That is actually quite a good bit of business there, letting go of him for £9.5 million. A very solid centre back for us over a number of years, but we have decided to let him go, seeing as his potential and progress was on the downward spiral towards the latter stages of that previous Champions League campaign. The other players that we have sold so far, Hercules Delfino, we knew we were going to sell this guy because we have Narek Voskanyan as well as the Argentinian, who is going to join us in a few days' time from Chelsea, who we did sign on a free transfer. So we decided we'd let go of Hercules Delfino, taking up a foreign spot, and didn't have all that much potential, despite the fact he was actually quite important in us winning the Club World Cup last season. He goes to Nice for £3.5 million again, potentially. Should have got a little bit more for him, but that was his value when he was at the club. In fact, it was over his value when he was at the club, and we did sign him on a free transfer back in 2032. So again, making some money off of that transfer, as I said, probably most famous for his efforts around this time last season in helping us lift that Club World Cup over Man United in the final, if only that was yesterday instead of last year. We'd much rather be Champions League winners than Club World Cup at the moment. And the other player we sold is another one of our backup goalkeepers. That was Jimmy Calls. We signed him on a free transfer around this time last season, and he has gone to Heracles for £65,000. Only spent one season at the club after being released by Man United, and I think that transfer could potentially rise if we go back to around about that £90,000 mark as well. So just making a little bit of profit there on Jimmy Calls as well, and that does mean we have a decent little transfer budget now that we can look to invest into the squad for those departures. We've got £19 million at the moment, the one thing about that I would keep in mind, I think about seven million will be coming out of that for the Filippo Dinelli instalment that is due this season after we did sign him last year. So I think that transfer budget might more accurately be around about the eleven or twelve million mark. But it does mean we've got a little bit of money now that we can play with, and there are still a few players I would not be against selling if the right money does come in for them. In fact, if we go over to the transfer hub yet again, I can show you guys some players who are underbid, Elias Anderson. I think we're going to let go of him because we can bring in a younger, more promising centre-back for him and Gaetaro de Prisco, and we will let go of him for £8.75 which will rise with instalments up towards the £13 million mark. He will also go to the Bundesliga, to Freiburg. And the other players under that are actually incomings who we will hopefully get over the line. Suleiman Suma would be the replacement for both Elias Anderson and Gaetano de Prisco, a young German centre back who does look quite promising. Four million, which could rise to six million for him. Hopefully, we beat Dortmund to that deal because they are also in for him. So I'm not too sure if we're going to get him yet, but he would be the replacement for de Prisco and Anderson, of course, with Philip Jakubov at the club already having been on loan at HK last season. So those two would be our backup centre backs going into this new European season. A few players who we are trying to sign on a free transfer, Frank Schneider's previously of Dortmund, as well as that midfielder there who is from Copenhagen when his contract expires come the latter part of this year. would be really stoked if we can get Schneiders in particular because he does look like a very high potential midfielder who can cover most of the backfield there. So I'm hopeful we can get him over the line, although there's a few clubs who are in for him as well. And the other player I am looking at signing at the moment is Ongyan Miskic. He is from Red Star 
5 million for him, 10,000 pounds wage. He is a left winger who does look quite similar in attributes to Chaka Traore, but is a lot younger at 23 years old. And for a player of that quality, I think 5 million is a pretty good investment in terms of being on the cheap side. So I'm hopeful we get him over the line. We should, because there's no other interest in him as well. So that would potentially be around 9 million pounds out of that transfer budget should those deals go through, but we'll also be adding a little bit over that potentially for that deal with Elias Anderson as well. And we might also try and get rid of some other players as well. As I said, going over to the tactic screen, this looks a little bit different to what it usually does. As I said, we've still got a lot of players away at the World Cup at the moment. And also, as I mentioned before, Basaro Gay unfortunately was actually injured by Alain Basicki during a training session, which is very interesting. Of course, Alain Basicki plays the same position as Basaro Gay, but he is out for five to six weeks with a lower back stress fracture. But Alain Basicki, to be fair to him, actually improving quite a bit these days. Three star current ability and does still have that five-star potential, so not missing out on too much there, at least in terms of defensive midfield. But a few other players that we are looking at letting go of potentially will make our way down a little bit further because Chaka Traore is an interesting one for a reason, which I will bring up shortly. But we go down a bit, and I'll try and find someone. Kenny Boreal with the likes of Louis Herrera and, of course, Plemsil Bokek with quite high potential. I would not be against letting go of Kenny Boreal. I'm hopeful we can get somewhere around the £16.5 million mark for him. I don't mind waiting until a little bit later, past when our transfer window does close here in Iceland and towards deadline day in Europe. If it does take that long to get that money for him, I think that might be worth holding out for. So he's a player we might look at letting go of there. Kenny Boreal with those young wingbacks that we do have coming through here at the club. Going down a bit further, there's a few players that have just returned on loan who we could get rid of, the likes of Thomas Tishi these days. Only three-star potential. I think we have better prospects than him on the wings these days. Also someone like Thomas Vatensdale. I'm hopeful that HK put a bid in for him like they say they are going to because I would not mind getting rid of him at 21 years old. Don't think he's going to improve too much here on that one-and-a-half-star current ability. Joachim Telemann, definitely get rid of him. Only one-and-a-half-star current ability and two-star potential for the 22-year-old. And going down a little bit further, I think most of the other players we might keep, albeit still debating about Tomohiro Horikawa. Three and a half star potential could be quite good, but also has quite high value as well. So we'll see what happens with him being a foreign left winger who doesn't have the greatest room to grow, even though he could actually end up being quite a good player. Maybe he's someone we will actually look at loaning out come this season because with the signing of that Serbian left winger, he would probably come in and be our starting left winger for this upcoming European season, albeit I think I might have identified a player from Man United who could also come in and fill the void. But the one player we do need to discuss a little bit is Chaka Traore. At the end of yesterday's episode, I was pretty sure we were going to sell him, but since the end of yesterday's episode, he has gained Icelandic citizenship, which changes things quite drastically. I think we could still potentially look at letting him go being 29 years old, but now that he is not a foreign player, that certainly just muddies the water a little bit in deciding whether or not we do let go of Chaka Traore. We have promised him if we get a bit of £40 million, we will let go of him, and I think that would be a pretty good amount for a player that we did sign way back in 2027 for less than a million pounds in his form, at least in European competition, has just been dropping a little bit, especially in the latter stages of that most previous European campaign. And as I said, with the Serbian coming in and also Jonata in good form for us domestically, maybe it's time that we do let go of Chaka Traore, despite the fact he has just gained that EU citizenship with that Icelandic nationality. Also worth noting is that we could actually keep a foreign left winger in this team. That is because when we get to the point where our full team is available, we do still have Adam Saki, Basaroge, and Ali Ramadan in our starting 11. Those are the three players who we definitely are going to have in our first rotation domestically. But we do also have Louis Herrera, as I said, who's probably going to work his way into the first rotation as a left back, and that already puts us up to four foreigners in the first team. So what we might do is pair him up with a left winger in the backup team just so they can build that partnership, and that will hopefully keep us in line with things in terms of the domestic requirements for foreign players. So the player I am looking at who could come in as an improvement to both Traore Jonada and that new Serbian who we are signing, as well as, of course, 
Tomohiro Horikawa is. This man from the team who did beat us in yesterday's Champions League final, this is Robson Fernando, 21 year old Brazilian, valued somewhere between 30 million and 43 million pounds. Three and a half star current ability and potential, and is actually quite an improvement attribute wise as an inside forward on Chaka Traore. So if I get enough money, or we could actually potentially loan him to buy him at the end of this season if we don't quite get that much money. But he is a player I would like to bring to the club. Can also play in the midfield as well. So it could be quite a useful option for us. But ideally we could bring him to the club as a first choice left winger. Just debating whether we try and sign him this summer. If we can generate enough through the sales of all those players. Or if we just loan him for this season with an optional fee to buy. And trigger that once our transfer window does close. Just in case we do after that raise some funds through some players. If we can get a bit more money for them on deadline day in Europe. Instead of before the domestic window does close here in Iceland. Which is just a little bit before that European window does. You can see here extremely doubtful in a transfer. But very interested in a loan. So that's kind of the thinking I have behind that and we could pair him up as I said with Louis Herrera in our backup team and get those guys to build a partnership there and then in the Champions League it doesn't matter how many foreign players we have those two can come in alongside all our other foreigners for that first choice Champions League team so that's what's happening so far in terms of the transfer market off the back of yesterday's episode we have just at the start of July as well so off the back of this I will go through the free agents and see if there's anyone interesting there that I haven't quite picked up on yet, especially young players who might be available on a free transfer. But we are going to play a game in today's episode. What we have done off the back of yesterday's one, we did show you guys that result against Villa at the end of yesterday's episode. Since then, we have only played two more competitive games, one before the World Cup break. That was a 3-0 win there with the first team against Nats KR. So a good win there, which does keep us unbeaten so far in the domestic league, albeit we are falling behind in terms of of games played but don't need to pick up too many more points to catch up to HK but the focus for today's episode is the Icelandic Cup we actually bet our junior affiliate club there in Lechner F by 7-1 only a few days ago in our first game since being forced to a return to action despite the fact that the World Cup is still going on and not too long off the back of that we've actually got quite a tough draw here in the third round of the Molka Bicker and I want to say fourth round earlier and that is against the team who last season and this upcoming season are going to be in Europa League qualifying, and that is Phil Kier. If we go back to the league table, they currently find themselves in third joint on points with us, but they've played one more game and have a far inferior goal differential. So with quite a few players unavailable on World Cup duty, as you saw before, this could actually be a little bit of a tricky game for us. Our team going into this one, Will Lurvik in goal, we have bumped him down to being a domestic cup goalkeeper, and he was happy to accept that. So that does mean we've got two good goalkeepers here at the club. If a good bid comes in for him, that's another player we might look at letting go. But we'll see what happens with Will Lurvik. Seeing as he is quite happy to be the backup to Cal Volan for this upcoming season. Ian Carlo at right back. Ali Ramadan just back recently from the World Cup. He is at centre back Congo not doing too well at that World Cup. Alongside him is the man who he did mention would be the in-house backup. To Gaetano de Prisco, once we sold him, that is Philip Jakubov. Had a loan spell at HK last year. He steps his way into this team with both Denali and Elias Anderson. Currently still being on World Cup duty at left back. We've got Plemzil Bokic. That is because Louis Herrera is at the World Cup. Mexico doing quite well in that at the moment. Very high potential player who we will hopefully give a bit of game time to this season as the backup to Louis Herrera in the midfield. Alain Basicki comes in for the injured Basaroge, as I mentioned, some good improvement from him since we signed him last season. Karel Giroux still here. He's another player. If we get a really good bid in for him, we might look to sell and then we could potentially use some of that money we are generating, could just loan that guy from Man United and spend that money on a young, promising midfielder instead. And in the Mozilla role is Fabio Maliano. Can't get rid of him at the moment, seeing as he is homegrown at club and is also a very versatile, useful option for us here. At Volsunga in the front three for this cup game, Hans Voss at right wing. Someone mentioned in the comments last week we could potentially use him as a left-sided player, but his crossing is quite good, and I do think that might be just a little bit wasted as an inside forward instead of an inverted winger. So for now, we're going to keep him out on the right-hand side. He's developing quite nicely. Is Hans Voss out on the left? Jonada doing a good job for us as the backup left winger 
for now, even though he does only have these days that free star potential. And up front is our new young striker. I say new, he's been at the club for quite a while, but probably the first time that you guys have seen him in a game, and that is Nolik Voskanyan. He kind of looks to me a little bit like Fabio Maliano. Maybe in the future, if he doesn't cut it as a striker, we could retrain him as a Mazala because he can play quite well in the midfield according to that bright green dot. But at the moment, we're trying him out as a striker. We'll just bring that up to star current ability and five-star potential in a short bench for these cup games. We've got Pedro Lemos at right back. He actually has a bit more potential than I realized. So ideally, he's going to get used a little bit more than Ian Carlo this upcoming season. The two-star Portuguese with three-and-a-half-star potential. Alongside him, Abdullah Kore, a foreign centre-back, who if we sign that German guy, we will either loan out or look at selling because there was some previous interest from some Premier League clubs in him. We've got Brynjau Galtas on there as a midfield option. Chaka Chare still down there as a wing option, seeing as I'm not too sure what we're going to do with him now that he has got that Icelandic citizenship. And Rune Bello is a youngster who was on loan last season. I think it was at HK. Indeed, it was. He did a decent job for those guys in Champions League qualifying. And the Europa League, he's down there as kind of a backup striker, but I think is going to end up being more of a useful wing option for us or an inside forward, or might be a player if the right offer does come along that we do look to sell. So that's our squad going in to this current game. There you can see the rest of the players still quite a few on international duty at the World Cup, as well as Kalen Rakasan, who has gone on holiday off the back of the World Cup. And we'll come back shortly and see if we can continue our path in the Icelandic Cup, a tricky third round tie with all those players missing as we travel away to take on Phil Kier. And five minutes into this one, we do have the first highlight, staying off with a goal kick in our favour, and Jakubov starts to make his way for plays that out to Bocic, and we try and get something going here down our left-hand side. As I said, this could potentially be a little bit of a tricky game for us with all those players that we do have missing at the World Cup. But hopefully these guys can still get the job done. Nice ball forward there for no leap, but that forces a decent save there out of the Phil Kerr goalkeeper at point blank range. We'll just see if anything does come from the subsequent corner, which Hans Voss is going to put into the mix. It is dealt with, but Giroud holds the ball here just outside the box. Maliano will curve that top right corner. He puts that in the back of the net, unlike what he did yesterday in the penalty shootout. Still totally not bitter about that at all. And we take a 1-0 lead here. After only six minutes, a good response after. They did clear that out for a corner. Drew shifts it on to Mariano. Just enough space there to curve that top right corner. And we take an early 1-0 lead. And only a few minutes off the back of that opening goal. There is a foul here on Voskanyan. So we'll see if anything does come from the subsequent free kick. And it is Jakubov who will take it. The centre back and nearly curves that just low enough. But just over the bar. Still 1-0 Volsunga after 10 minutes. And going forward now to the 17 minute mark and we have another free kick here inside the Phil Kier half. So despite the rotation we do have in this team, we have started things off quite well and there's some good short passing on the edge of the box and it ends up with a Jonata goal off the back of a Hans Voss assist. And after only 17 minutes, we already have a 2-0 lead. So it looks like these backup players are going to be more than good enough against some of our local teams here in Iceland this season. Good short passing Jonata. As I said, doing a pretty good job for us as a backup left winger for now. Slots that away. 2-0 Volsunga nice and early in this cup tie. And we go forward now to the 25-minute mark for our next highlight. It is a throw in to Phil Kerr as they will try and find a way back into this game. So far, you have to say you'll be a little bit disappointed in their performance considering the team that we have put out for a team which is going to be in Europa League qualifying later this season and only a month or so's time. But Helgeson, there's a good interception there from Karel and he'll move this forward to Nareku, starts to make his way down the right-hand side. What can he do? Makes his way inside the byline. Far post, the goalkeeper makes a meal of that, and Jonata is there to head that home. And halfway through the first half here, with, as you saw, quite a rotated team, we have a 3-0 lead already. That should be enough for us to make our way through to the next round of this Icelandic Cup. Boskanyan puts that into the mixer. Too much height on it. For the goalkeeper, he makes an absolute meal of it. Jonata heads it home, and we're up by three halfway through the first half. And that is half time in this cup tie here in the third round of the Molka Bicker. And despite that rotated team that we did put out, we are playing very well here and take a 3 0 lead into half time. As far as I can see at the moment, no need for any changes just yet. So we'll leave things as they are 
for the early stages of the second half free nil up here at half time in the third round of this Icelandic Cup tie. And just past the hour mark, we do have our first highlight here of the second half, and it is a near post corner, but unfortunately comes off the upright. I think that was Ali Ramadan who tried to beat the goalkeeper there at his near post. Unfortunately, that time the Wilberg denies us, but not too long off the back of that, we do have a Fran and Ramadan is there again, plays that forward to Ian Carlo. Nice ball over there, looking for Jonata, but it is intercepted by a Phil Kier player, but we are still on the attack here, albeit play that back to our centre backs, but are camped inside the opposition half here. And Fabio Mariano plays that up to Narek. Some good short passing here again on the edge of the box. And they do get to clear that there. Do feel care. But this highlight, I think, is going to continue. Because so far, haven't seen too much from this one off the back of that previous corner. Hans Voss plays that to Narek. Mariano yet again finds the ball here for Hans Voss. He chips the goalkeeper. Just gets enough help there from the crossbar. And that will make it 4-0 with 25 minutes left. Of this one, Elaine Basicki down to a red heart. So we'll probably also make a substitution off the back of this replay, but some good short passing there, sustained pressure in Hans Voss. Just enough dip on that chip to get a bit of help from the crossbar and find its way over the line. So 4 0 here after the 65 minute mark. I think a player who we could use some game time here might be a youngster like Rune Bello. So we might bring him on here for Alan Basicki. Karel Giroux can go back into that DM role, and Hans Voss does have the ability to play in the midfield, so we'll shuffle those things around, and that's our first sub used at 4-0 after 65 minutes. And going forward, only a few minutes off the back of that first substitution, we're going to make a few more now, because Mariano is down to a red heart also, only 20 minutes left, so we'll bring on Galkasson for Mariano, and we'll just shift that midfield around a little bit more to make that a little bit more familiar, and also... I think we should bring on Abdullah Kore, give him a little bit of game time. Pedro Lemos still a little bit tired after playing that previous cup game against Lechner. That is why Carlo starts in this one. But I think we will bring on Kore here for Ramadan just for these last 20 minutes, seeing as we do have a four goal lead. And we've just made our way inside the last 10 minutes of this one. We still have a 4 0 lead, albeit that's a little bit scrappy at the back there. And it is Phil Kier who are on the attack and they'll try and get a consolation goal at this stage. It's fair to say they might be a little bit disappointed. With this performance, albeit that is a poor cross, so they'll still be disappointed as Will Lurvik does claim that. And maybe we're going to get another chance here in this one. But so far, a good performance, as I said, from a very heavily rotated team away from home. Probably the only first choice player who did start in this game was, of course, Ali Ramadan. So that does bode well for this upcoming season. But Jonata makes his way down the left hand side. Hans Voss back flick. We're still on the attack here. Hans Voss will drill that a little bit of curve and it finds its way inside that far post. He picks up a double and that will make it 5-0 late in this one. Hans Voss doing a really good job there as our backup right winger in this game and as well as in the last domestic season. Just fires that around the defender. The goalkeeper can't get there and it's 5-0 late here in this third round cup tie. And we are about to just enter injury time in this one. A very good performance, as I've said a few times, especially with the amount of rotation we did have to do leading into this game against a team like Phil Kier and away from home. That is a very comprehensive and clinical win there. 5-0 away from home, especially when you consider we only had 1.55 XG. So very good in front of goal there. And that is a great win from a lot of players who wouldn't usually be in our first team getting the job done over a team who are going to be in Europa League qualifying in the not too distant future so we do make our way through to the fourth round of the Icelandic Cup despite that one looking like it might be a potential banana skin game we win it there 5-0 over Phil Kier. and back in the inbox off the back of that game in today's episode as I said a potential banana skin but we got over it quite nicely picking up a very comprehensive 5-0 win Hans Voss in the end picked up the player of the game and that will do it for today's episode, as I said, a bit of a rankings update and a transfer update as well while we steely make our way towards the Champions League playoff to kick off the next season. But if you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. In terms of when we'll come back, honestly, not too sure exactly what fixture it will be for. It depends how much I get done between now and when I come back for tomorrow's episode. We'll see exactly when it is. I think the game that stands out the most 
is that one against HK. But if I can get further, we'll just come back a little bit later and steadily make our way towards re-entering European football for the next season. Also, by then, hopefully, we will have done a little bit more transfer business and can update you guys on what our squad does look like. We will do our squad recap as we usually do going into that first game of the new Champions League season. And also, if you want to play along with this one, I did leave a link in the comments of yesterday's episode with the save file off the back of that Champions League funnel. I'll do the exact same thing in the comments of today's video once I do wake up, seeing as these videos do come out usually while I am sleeping here in New Zealand. But as I said, we'll come back at some stage in July, not exactly sure when, and hopefully by then have a bit more transferred news for you guys before we do kick off the new European season. So until then, Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.